Welcome to the module on mechanisms and machines. So in this module, we will talk about different kinds of machines as well as mechanisms. Before we can design a machine or a robot, it's very important for us to understand what really a machine is as well as what kind of mechanisms are out there that can help us realize the design of a machine or a robot. So now, in this class, we have been often talking about mechanical engineers researching, designing, developing, manufacturing and testing machines. But we have never really given a definition for what a mecha mechanism is or what a machine is. So the definitions that I'm about to give are not exactly strict definitions. There are some disagreement as to what a machine is, what a mechanism is, but more or less the definitions that I give you now uh, will capture the sense of what those two things are. So. Uh, we define a machine as a device or a system that transforms energy from a source to a destination and it does so by means of either one or a set of mechanisms. So, so in essence, there is an action on the motion and forces and moments, which makes sense because energy is usually obtained by doing some work and work involves displacement as well as forces and the moments. So, mechanism on the other hand is an assembly uh, of relatively moving rigid bodies or some of the rigid or some of the bodies could deform as well that uh, that transfer or transmit motion so the emphasis is really on the motions rather than on the transfer or, or uh, uh, transmission of energy typically a machine would have many mechanisms inside them so i'll give you a few examples of the kinds of machines that machines have so here is uh, a pair of gears that has been put together using a snappy XO robot kit and you can see that as the red gear rotates, the green gear is rotating in the opposite direction. And you might also notice that as the red gear rotates, the green gear is actually rotating at much lower speed. So for one revolution of the red gear, you might have only half or three quarter of a revolution of the green gear. So gear system is an example of a mechanism. Here is another mechanism. This is a mechanism, what we call a cam mechanism. Essentially, in this case, as I rotate the cam, you can see that the green bar is going up and down. This is an example of a cam mechanism. Here is a timing belt over pulley mechanism. So as I rotate one of these gears, you can see that the other pulley or the gear is rotating as well. A slightly more complicated example of a mechanism is what we call a four bar linkage system. So as I rotate this link over here, you can see the other two links are rotating as well. So this is called a four bar mechanism because you have the ground, which is the red plate, uh, and second, third, and fourth link. So there are four links connected together over here that give rise to a particular kind of motion. So you can imagine that there might be a motor connected to this shorter green beam and that in turn is giving rise to an oscillatory motion of the follower or the output link. Here is another example of a gear based mechanism. This one is slightly more complicated than what you saw before because the axis of rotation over here is this way for the input and then the other gears are actually at an offset from the axis of rotation of this one. Okay, so as I rotate this, you can see these gears are rotating along with the input gear. So these are just a few examples of the mechanisms that are seemingly simple. Now let me show you an example of a much more complicated mechanism. This is a robot, a walking robot, and the input is coming from a motor. So this is the, the DC motor that we have over here. And then it's connected via a set of linkage, which we call actually a, a six bar linkage system to give rise to the walking motion. So let me connect this and show you exactly how it works. So you can see as soon as I put this robot on the ground, it's going to walk. You guys have seen this before as well. So one single simple rotation of the DC motor is giving rise to a much more complicated motion on the output. So this mechanism has been designed in a way to get that desired motion from a very simple rotary motion. Now let's talk about the machine. So a good example of a machine is something that you're very familiar with, let's say an automobile, a car. Now a car itself is a very complex machine. It has 
an internal combustion engine inside it it has air conditioning system it may have a heating system and many other things so let's just focus on the internal combustion engine so internal combustion engine itself is a machine which contains lots of different mechanisms so if you look at this picture on the left this is a picture of what we call a six cylinder V configuration engine so if you count the number of uh, cylinders over here there are three on one side three on the other side and you have a mechanism to convert what we call a to and fro or a reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotary motion. So if you look at the overall objective of an internal combustion engine, its objective is to take the chemical energy of the fuel and convert that into the mechanical energy of the car, right? And mechanical energy of the car comes from the fact that the wheels are actually rolling, most likely without slipping. So you need to find a way to convert the chemical energy of the fuel into the motion of the car. Now, that is accomplished via a set of mechanisms. So if you look at this picture, you can see the timing belt running over these tooth pulleys. You will see uh, uh, cylinders over here, and, and you, you can see the cylinders very, very well over here because this is actually a cutout. And you have the pistons, you have what we call a crankshaft over here. We have the cams over here. And there are all different examples of different mechanisms that are contained in this particular machine called internal combustion engine. So this is a pretty good example of a nice machine. Now, let's just focus on one of those mechanisms. Uh, let's not worry about the camshaft, let's not worry about the timing belt and the pulleys and the crankshaft and so on. Let's just focus on a simple mechanism, what we call a slider crank mechanism. So you have basically shown in this middle picture just one cylinder with one set of piston connected to a connecting rod, which is in the brown color. And then you have the crank, which is in the purple color. Okay, so the idea is that somehow the air fuel mixture is going to push this push piston in the downward direction and it's going to cause the rotation of the crankshaft which in turn via a set of gearing system and powertrain will, will be connected to the wheels that will make the, the car go okay so let's understand how this whole thing works so first of all this is what we call a cam wall okay and this is this itself over here is a cam okay all right now what happens is that at the right moment the cam walls allow the air fuel mixture to come inside and then the spark plug ignites the air fuel mixture which in turn propels the piston in the downward direction it's going to rotate the crank via the slider crank mechanism and then the combusted gases have to be have to come out so this particular wall the red wall will open and the gases will come out and all this can be seen very nicely in an animation that's available on on wikipedia so i'm going to show it to you so you can see in this animation how this cycle works. So you'll see when it's in the blue color, we'll wait for it to turn into blue color, the air fuel mixture is going to come inside. That's when it comes down. This valve open, there was a there was a spark from the spark plug, and the combustion gases, because of the high temperature and high pressure, the piston was pushed down. As a result, the crank is rotating and it's always rotating in one direction, even though the piston is constantly changing its direction of motion. And then the exhaust gases come out by opening this valve over here. So that's an example of a simple mechanism that's converting the reciprocating motion of the piston into the rotary motion of the crank. So if you look at the motion of individual parts over here, the piston, you can clearly tell that this is doing a translation. If you look at the motion of the crank itself, that's doing a rotation, a pure rotation about a fixed point. If you look at the motion of the connecting rod, the rod that connects with the piston with the crank is doing a general planar motion. And all these two, these two joints are rotary joint, while over here we have a sliding joint too. Okay, let's look at another uh, machine, an electric toothbrush. Now, you may not think of an electric toothbrush so much as a machine, but it, in reality it is a machine because the power from the battery, the electrical energy of the battery, whether it's a rechargeable battery or whether it's a, a AA or AAA uh, alkaline battery that you'll typically find in cheaper toothbrushes, um, for example, something like this, this is a cheap Colgate toothbrush, probably sells for about $10. On the other hand, what you're seeing on the screen in the picture is of a brown toothbrush, which is slightly more expensive because it's, it has a rechargeable battery and it's much better designed than something like this. So, so for something like this, a toothbrush, whether it's a cheap one or a more expensive one, you have a battery, you have a motor, and somehow that simple rotation of a motor, which is the rotation about a fixed axis, has to be translated or transferred into the oscillatory or a rotary motion of the brush head okay to make that work you have 
to have a mechanism that will make that work. Yeah? So I'll show you a very simple example of a mechanism. And remember, different toothbrushes out there actually have different kinds of mechanisms. So if you have an electric toothbrush at home, which you have no use for, I would highly encourage you to open it. Of course, do it safely, open it up and see what kind of mechanisms are in the toothbrush. Now let's look at one example of the kind of mechanism that might be in something like this, this kind of toothbrush. Okay, so first of all, um, we would expect that somewhere over around here, you'll have a battery and maybe a motor. Okay, so let's try to draw a, a motor first of all. Okay, a simple motor. So let's say that's our you know simple DC motor. And then what we will do is we will take the rotation around this axis and transfer that into a rotation about a horizontal axis. So we can do that via what we call a crown gear. And a lot of electric toothbrush actually have something like this. So this is actually a crown gear. So this crown gear actually engages with the teeth over here. Okay, so I'm just drawing it a little bit separate so that you can see it clearly. But the idea is that the rotation about this vertical axis over here has been now transferred into a horizontal axis rotation via a crown gear arrangement. Now, if you position your eye over here and look into this direction, then you will see this crown gear like this, right? You'll see a crown gear that's rotating about a fixed point. Okay, that's your crown gear. Now, what we can do is, we can transfer the rotary motion of this crown gear into an oscillatory motion of your brush head. That's what you want to do. So now we're going higher up as we are drawing all these mechanisms. So you could have a pin joint over here and that pin joint could be connected, could be connected by a long beam. And we don't know what the size of this beam is, but you know, by, by a long beam. Okay. And this is a fixed pivot. So essentially what we have is as this rotates, this is going to oscillate and this is going to oscillate. This is what we call a four bar mechanism. So if I want to draw the brush head, my brush head is right over here. This is my brush head. And these are my bristles. Okay, so this, this is my brush head that I'm drawing. Okay, let me write right this brush head. So as this is rotating fully in 360 degree, your brush head is essentially oscillating which of course seeks to clean your teeth so this is a very simple example of a set of mechanisms that you could have to convert the rotary motion of the motor so this is your motor this is the crown gear and this is what we call a four bar linkage system okay now there are different kinds of toothbrush out there that employ different kinds of mechanisms. In fact, that is how all these companies that are designing and selling these toothbrushes have gotten patents on uh, different designs. So somebody may be employing a motor and a crown gear arrangement followed by a four bar linkage. Um, uh, a Colgate toothbrush like the one that I was showing you before actually employs a double slider crank mechanism to convert the rotary motion of the motor into the, the oscillatory motion. Some of the toothbrushes actually employ a spatial linkage system to do this. Some of the other toothbrushes employ a cam system to, to uh, get the oscillatory motion. Like I said before, if you have a spare toothbrush at home, I highly encourage you to open them up. Uh, in fact, I've done that with many cheap toothbrushes for a, that I bought for a few dollars from, from eBay. Now let me present you another interesting example, example of a steam engine. We know that Savory and Newcomb in UK invented the steam engine, but it was James Watt who made it more efficient. Now the principle of a steam engine is based on the fact that when the steam condenses, it creates a negative pressure, it creates a vacuum. So for example, if you look at this figure, once the steam condenses, this particular piston over here is pulled in the downward direction because of the negative pressure or the vacuum created here. And then somehow via a mechanism, you have to convert this to and fro rotary, to and fro reciprocating motion of the piston into either a rotating motion of the crank or something else. 
So James Ward also was also credited for creating a very ingenious mechanism and it is said that in a letter he wrote to his son he said that he was more proud of this particular mechanism that he is seeing on the right hand side than any invention that he had ever made. So one of the biggest questions is how do you actually design a mechanism like this where the piston which is moving in the vertical direction in a straight line is converted into the rotary motion at this end. In fact, this is a part of the research that I'm currently doing where we are trying to answer these kinds of questions as to if you have a given motion, how do you design a mechanism where you can also where you can compute not only the dimensions, like if you have all these links over here, what their dimensions are, where these pivots are located, as well as what their joint types are and how they're connected together. So let me show you an animation of uh, Watts mechanism. So over here you can see that this link is basically moving up and down and then you have a set of links, links over here that ultimately end up into a pure rotation at this end. Okay, So this is the basic mechanism that, that James Watt had invented. Now let me show you how we can model a part of this mechanism. Now the part of the mechanism over here which we are interested in is basically what we call a four bar combined with a pentagraph mechanism. And this is something that we can actually model in, in my tool motion gen that we have developed. So I'm going to show it to you using the web, uh, web-based tool. So this is at cadcam.engcinesb.edu. So you should be able to use this up as well. So I'm going to do this in real time. So, and I'm not going to explain as to how I'm going to do it, except just to do it. And then later on, we'll talk about how, how this has been actually designed. Okay. So, you know, very quickly we get to this. So as soon as I put this four bar mechanism together, you can see that this particular point of the coupler, this we call coupler, this could be the crank. This green uh, circular arrow over here shows that there's a motor connected over here. And as this rotates, this is going to have a general planar motion. This is going to uh, oscillate as well. And this particular point of the coupler, the pink uh, bar, is tracing a figure eight kind of path. So let me run the animation and you will see how this works. So, so you see that this midpoint of the pink bar is actually tracing almost a straight line over here. So this is not exactly a straight line, but this is what we call an approximate straight line. Okay, and this was the ingenuity in James Watt's uh, design, that you wanted to get an approximate um, line coming somewhere. Because if you could get an approximate straight line, then you could connect your piston that's moving up and down direction at this point. Okay. Now what he did was he wanted to magnify this straight line motion okay? because the pistons have to be moved up and down by quite some distance and he could not get that magnification. So what he did was he, he, he basically took this four bar and he added a pantograph uh, to this mechanism and he did that by adding a parallelogram mechanism. So let me do that. So I'm first going to convert this into a ternary link. Don't worry, that disappeared, but we'll get it back in a minute. And I will convert that back into a ternary link. And I'm going to trace this path, not this one. Okay. All right, let's plot this curve as well. Okay, so yes, I know that it looks kind of uh, complex, but you will you can see that actually this path, this particular path over here, and this path, they're they're parallel paths, but you can see that this path is magnified, and this is the path of this particular point over here, the, the join between four and six. So let me play it and show it to you. So you can see that actually we have this point that's moving less in this direction, vertical direction, while this point is moving quite a bit. That's the magnification that we have been able to achieve. And this is what you actually see in Watt's mechanism. So let me show you this again. So you can see there is a parallelogram over here, and that's the four bar that I had originally put together. So this is the point that is, magnifi that is magnified in vertical direction. The motion of this particular point is magnified in the vertical direction. And then this link over here is connected back to another four bar and this is where your crank is. So, so this is an example of uh, a more complex linkage system that gives rise to the motion that you desire.